Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. Welcome Spartans to Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. I am your host, Say David, and with me today is Krista. Hey. And Oren. Hey. That's okay. right, everybody. This week's topic will continue the final in our lore series of movie theater character and dossiers. So we are ending it all with the one and only Spartan John 117, Mr. Master Chief. Not Mr. Chief. That's another, difference. That's another guy. That's another guy. He's the next episode. Yeah. Oh, that'd Although, be funny. So I think Krista Brown has volunteered to take us through some top interesting parts. Obviously, we're not going to cover it all. He's everywhere. Well, he's also, like, mostly in the games anyway. And if you're listening to this podcast, you better have played the games. Um, I mean... <laughs> oh, they've played the games. Oh, okay, good. I'm just checking. Yeah, they've played the games. Yeah, so I think we're just going to kind of go through basically what he's in and the general impact he has in those stories, and as well as talk about our favorite chief moments over the saga. Hooray! Okay, let's go. Uh, before we tackle Master Chief, we're going to talk about Cortana, because that is the last person we discussed. Uh, she was made from a clone of Halsey's brain. She specializes in being able to tell if caves are natural or not. <laughs> was that nice. Nice. I didn't, I didn't write that, but oh my god. Awesome. Uh, she, That's a good uh, one. She, she has a short-lived but eventful career with Chief through the events of CE First Strike, Halo 2, and Halo 3. Uh, she spent several years uh, on and the dawn. Halo 4. Yeah, yeah, on the dawn. <laughs> going, going insane. Well, I mean, here, we're going, we're getting to it. She worked with Tree Chief to defeat the Didact in Halo 4 and sacrificed herself. Okay, we got there. Uh-huh. And then she came back for the, from the dead in Halo 5 and took over the galaxy, so... She's got a Damn. long and fruitful career ahead of you, her. We can't see. We can't wait to see what more comes from this character. Um, <laughs> hopefully, more. Hopefully, we get back to the uh, being able to tell if caves are natural or not. I'm not sure. I like what's going on now. I liked the cave part better. All right, on to the man himself, the man of the hour, the man we all know and love, uh, Master Chief. Uh, so here's some, uh, here's a rundown. Uh, he was born March 7th, 2511. His homeworld is Iridanus 2. His height is 206.3 centimeters or 610 without armor. Jesus, that's a tall guy. Uh, with armor, he is 218 se centimeters or, uh, 7 foot 2. Uh, his weight is 130 kilograms or 286 pounds without armor. Uh, he gets a bit chunkier when he puts on his armor. He goes all the way up to 451 kilograms, or 994 pounds. His hair color is brown, which of course we've never seen. Uh, his eye color is blue, which we have seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> his rank is uh, Master Chief Petty Officer. Uh, his service number is one S117. Uh, and also his name is John. Uh, I don't think this is in here. John, no last name. No last name given. Uh, major appearances. All right. Well, we have, he's been in just a couple of things. You know, he's a character that we all know about, but you know, we don't see him as often as we'd like. So, uh, he, he is in Halo The Fall of Reach, which is a book that we have all read way too much, um, which is great. Uh, so, uh, Chief is kidnapped and trained. It's kind of his origin story. Uh, the next one, this is all chronological, by the way. Uh, the next one is Halo Silent Storm. Uh, Chief kicks ass, learns the true meaning of friendship with Johnson, and uh, battles the Covenant. Uh, Halo Oblivion, which is just Halo Dune, so uh, go check that out. <laughs> uh, Halo Combat Evolved, it's a little known game that came out in the early 2000s. Uh, he finds some kind of weird ring and then immediately blows it up. Uh, Halo The Flood is, um, he finds the ring, blows it up, but with extra details. Uh, Halo First Strike is Chief blows up the, uh, I don't think it's the uneven <laughs> elephant. <laughs> the uneven, the, the, yeah, what, the something uh, hierophant. The, un the un unyielding, unyielding hierophant. But nice. yeah, I definitely think of elephants when, uh, I, when think I think of that is, station as well. <laughs> I wonder if it was planned for Aaron to write this script and conveniently not be <laughs> present in the recording. Like, I, I, I kind of love I it though. Yeah. I'm having Motive. fun. Uh, Halo 2, Chief gives the Covenant back their bomb, then murders a uh, 
prisoner in his mobility scooter before. Oh. Oh, yeah, he does. Uh, he murders a old man in his mobility school scooter before abandoning Cortana. That's great. <laughs> Halo Uprising. Uh, that is a comic. Uh, Chief tries to assassinate Truth, but only manages to blow stuff up instead. Perfect. Uh, Halo 3. Chief returns to the Earth the hard way, teams up with Arby, and then goes to the Ark to end the Covenant once and for all. Gets lost in space with Qu Cortana aboard the Dawn. Uh, Halo 4, uh, Chief and Cortana land on Requiem, accidentally release the Didact, disrespects Del Rio, and then fights the Didact and kisses, kicks his ass. Nice. Uh, Cortana dies, and Chief becomes a sad boy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Halo Escalation, which is another comic series, so he is in issues 8, 9, 10, and the next 72 hours. I think that's what 8, 9, and 10 is called. Uh, Chief kicks the Didact's ass again, and then composes him. Ooh. Uh, Halo 5, Chief and Blue Team <laughs> track down and release Cortana, and then she, uh, and then she breaks Chief's heart. It's very sad. And then finally we have Halo Shadows of Reach. Chief, Chief and Blue Team go back to Reach, battle the Banished, and then collect Halsey's science project from her lab. Yeah, she, uh, Halsey made one of those, um, one of those volcano science projects where you put, like, the vinegar and the Ooh. baking soda in. Yeah. Halsey really wanted that back. It was one of her prized possessions. She really likes the. Uh, I mean, she won first place. Volcano. So yeah, she won first you, place you in the science fair. It. Yeah, so she they had to go back and recover that. She was very insistent. Uh, <laughs> here's some uh, fun trivia. A tower in the shape of John's helmet can be found on Mars in Destiny One. I remember seeing that. Oh. Uh, little known fact: Did you know the people who made Destiny also made the first couple of Halo games? Isn't oh. that crazy? Yeah, that's, <laughs> Are that's all these really just cool. Going to be Destiny trivia. That's great. <laughs> yep. Uh, Fable Two makes a reference to the Master Chief with a character known as a character of legend named Hal, oh, that was also cool, yeah. called the Minstrel Chief. The armor featured is known as Hal's Armor. A sword resembling the energy sword is also featured in the game known as Hal's Sword. I love that. That was really cool. I did like that. I like the appearances in other games. Uh, a wax sculpture of Master Chief is on display at Madame Tussauds in Los Madame, Angeles. Madame Tussaud. Oh, in Los Angeles in, and Amsterdam. Uh, he's the first video game character to receive a Manum Tassad wax sculpture. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. That's all. Yeah. That's a good piece of trivia. Yeah. Cool. Good job, Aaron. This piece of trivia is really long. What the fuck, Aaron? All right. John's rise through the ranks is a fast one. In September of 2525, he was 14. Uh, he was promoted to Petty Officer, third class, before the mission to Iridanus Secundus. <laughs> nice. Um, in November, he was promoted to Petty Officer 2nd Class when his training was complete, and by April of the next year, John was a Petty Officer 1st Class during Operation Silent Storm, which is from the book Silent Storm, <laughs> and that is when he received a three-rank promotion to Master Chief Petty Officer by Colonel uh, Marmon Crowther. Uh, I don't listen to the Crowther. audio books. Crowther. Crowther. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't listen to the audiobooks, um, and the downside of that is I have no idea how to pronounce anyone's name say in the video yeah. games. It's great. It's true. Uh, he was only 15 when he received that promotion, so, you know, Chief is kind of stagnated. Um, <laughs> he's found himself in a dead-end job where he can't get any promotions, so that's really... I was really hoping for a little more, you know, just just more ambition from him. Like, geez, he, he's been that way since 15. He's like, what, 40, 45 or something now? I mean, come on. Yeah, he's not a real go-getter. Yeah, he's really not. He's really not, you know. It's, it's just a shame he had so much potential. <laughs> uh. Uh, Master Chief appears in Konami's Super Bomberman R as oh, one of right. three exclusive characters in the Xbox One version. He is known as Master Chief Bomber, a Spartan 2 super soldier, soldier from the planet Halo. Hmm. Interesting. He's, speed he's a speed-typed bomber, and his special ability is the Spartan Shot. I'm pretty sure that's actually accurate. He is a Spartan 2 super soldier from the planet Halo. That's exactly... That's exactly I don't know. I don't know about this. Questionable lore at best. Really funny lore at worst. Yeah, good job, Aaron. Uh, so since we kind of are all pretty familiar with Master Chief and his career, we wanted to kind of quickly go through 
those points and then kind of open the floor to us talking about some of our favorite Master Chief moments. Uh, because uh, some of these are really, 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 really cool. And I really, like really, really cool. Really, really cool. All right, who wants to go first? David, Oren? Tell me, what's your favorite thing? Tell me, I want to know. I will go first. Okay. So I had, when I first thought of, like, sit down and think, I think about it today, uh, I, like, I knew we were doing this, and I was like, oh, I'll do that later, it'll come to me, it'll come to me. And I was like, oh crap, what kind of moments do I like? Um, so I, <laughs> What do I like? I, I was trying to think of like non-video game moments that maybe like not everybody would know. Um, so I'm thinking, for me, one of the biggest ones that I remember seeing, and I'll even go walk back and watch the, the clip because it's so goddamn dope, is in Forward of the Dawn, the web series. It's really, really cool. Um, so John like mounts a hunter and shoves the grenade into the worms and then like backflips off it and then it explodes and it's such a cool moment and everything got ever since i've seen that i've wanted that to be in the game i want hunters to be mountable like vehicles and you just kind of like punch into them and throw grenades inside them i just want that animation i feel like it's it's missing uh, but it's so cool it was just one of the coolest moments i'd, uh, I'd seen john do there you go. That's that's one moment, Chris. That would be a wild like animation. Oh yeah. Game, and just gameplay moment. Like you you have to get its health down to a certain level, and then a prompt. It's like an assassination like, almost. Yeah. 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 Mount Hunter. Oh uh, <laughs> yes. Question mark. I yes. Don't, don't mind, mind if, if I, do. I do. Yeah. I would love to mount you. Thank you. Um. All right, Orin. Um, all right, so I have, I think, a pretty, a fairly iconic one. This is probably very common amongst uh, long-term Halo fans, but I don't mind because when I experienced this moment in the Halo franchise, like, it basically locked me in for the next, what, 17 years or something? Um, and that's at the beginning of Halo 2, at the end of Cairo Station, when Chief says, um, he's talking to Lord Hood, and he says, Sir, permission to leave the ship, and he says, for what purpose? And then Chief responds with, to give the Covenant back their bomb. Hell and yeah. And then we get that sequence of him moving it into the airlock, and then Cortana goes, just one question, what if you miss? And then, like, it's just, just this beautifully composed shot with the hangar in the background, you see the space in the viewports, you see Chief right in the middle holding the, the hatch, and then he says, I won't, and then just like pulls it down, rides through space with the bomb, blows up, I forget the name of the ship, and like, gosh, it was just, it's just so badass. And then reimagined with the blur cutscenes in the anniversary edition. Oh, so oh yeah. It's like so freaking good. And, and I think like, like moments like these, I, I think you know they don't appear a lot throughout the, uh, the 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 series, but like Chief does have a, a good amount of these types of moments where it's just like he just takes the badassery to the next level. And when I played that as a kid, like I just couldn't forget it, and I just like instantly wanted to play more of Halo Two. And then from there, it's just like. The rest is history, they say. So I, I always say that is like, you know, even though I played Halo 1 and like played a lot of multiplayer with my friends and stuff and was like, yeah, this is a fun game. I feel like that moment for me was when Halo became more than just like a fun game that I play. It became like, this is like one of like- one A of way of awesome life. Games. Yeah. A way of life. <laughs> way of life. <laughs> it, it became, I don't know, it just became more of a, an experience and I just got very much more invested into the franchise after that, as opposed to just being like, oh, I'm a kid playing a video game. So, so I always, I, that will always have a special place for me, but I just also think it's just like, without a doubt, like, uh, what's it called? Um, objectively just, a crazy badass scene. You went to I'm a kid playing a video game to I'm a kid addicted to a video game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that that is the start of my video game addiction. <laughs> it's good. It's good to do. It's a very cost effective addiction, let me tell you. I mean, you can play a video game for a long amount of time without buying a new one. So, that's good. That's good. <laughs> the that's modern world justify. helps you now more than ever. I know. I know. The modern conveniences it's amazing. 
It's All right. trying to be alive. Krista. Oh, thank you for asking. Oh my goodness. I thought you'd never ask. Wow. Um, <laughs> I have two. They're both book moments, so uh, I'm very special that way. Uh, the first one is from uh, Halo The Fall of Reach, the original book, the book that came before the video game, which makes Halo a book franchise and, and with spin-off video games rather than a video game franchise with spin-off books. Um, so uh, it's where Cortana and Chief are doing their first like real test together, and Admiral Ackerson's like, I'm a big butthole, and I'm going to put make it live <laughs> fire for their first testing, and hopefully I kill this dude. Uh, and at one point, uh, one of I think it's a I think it's a vehicle of some sort. I think it's a flying vehicle of some sort, like a it, plane. Uh, it's a plane. Yeah, yeah it's a broadsword or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it is a broadsword. Okay. And they shoot missiles at him, and he just pretty much just. Cortana's like, wait, I can calculate this, and she does her weird math thing, and then she's like, all right, Chief, just slap it. Chief's like, okay. <laughs> he just, like, slaps a missile I'm gonna, aside. I'm gonna help uh, move your armor at this precise moment. Yeah, yeah, it's when they kind of start really sinking in that way where Ch Cortana's helping Chief, Chief's movements, so he has a faster reflex, which... As a Spartan, he al already has a super fast reflex, but now with an AI, it's crazy. So he's able to pretty much slap a missile or punch a missile aside. Uh, that was pretty amazing. <laughs> it's just like, oh. And then, of course, everyone who's watching that live fire test is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. We made, we made a grievous mistake. We made a guy who can missile. punch a missile mad at us. <laughs> uh, the other... The other um, moment is from the most recent Chief book, which is Shadows of Reach. They both take place on Reach. Reach is just a great place for Chief moments. It really, uh, is and a it's great moment. Or it great is. Place. Great place. It is. That's why every time they go back, we're like, hell yeah. Dope moments coming. Fuck yeah. Um. So yeah, Chief is stuck. Uh. In because Reach was super glassed, there are a bunch of, like, underground caverns and, like, ditches and shit like that. So they're hiding in a ditch, and this banshee's just absolutely pummeling them. And then Chief's like, hold my beer, guys. I'll get this banshee out of the way. And when the banshee comes close over the hole, uh, he just uppercuts it. Because that's what people do now. They just uppercut banshees, and it completely, pretty much destroys the banshee. Um, totally normal thing to do. Yeah, totally normal thing to do. He also didn't have Cortana at this point as well. This was just him being like, you know what? I can do that. He, That's something I can do. He did his own calculations. <laughs> he did his own calculations. He's, he's, he chose he violence. <laughs> yeah, chose violence. <laughs> and he uppercut yeah. a banshee. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I guess both involve his him punching things you're really not supposed to punch. And that's the beauty of Master Chief. He just he doesn't care about the rules. He'll punch he whatever will punch. he wants to punch. He will punch you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Is there so any other moments you guys want to... Is basically you're saying. I'm, I love Punchy Chief, but I'm not a fan of, like, Chief versus Lock Punchy Chief. That's not the Punchy Chief I want. That's not the Punchy Chief I've come to know and love. Um, yeah, if Punchy yeah, Chief I, actually I hit Lock, Lock should have been a bloody pulp. So, yeah. Well, that's a cool fight, though. Um... What I will say, I also really liked the Believe trailer um, oh, for Halo 3. I love that moment. The right? entire trailer. The entire trailer is so dope. And then he just like drops the bubble shield and the ray it blast just kind of like blows up around it. The shield goes down. He just jumps off the cliff into, into a bunch of Covenant. It's so cool. It was such, such a great trailer. Yeah, that was great marketing. Yeah. That, I, I think that, that might have been peak. It's it's come close since, but but that's definitely well, Halo, Halo 3, marketing. three marketing was hype as fuck, man. That's, yeah, it was. all of the best trailers come out of the Halo three marketing cycle. I don't think any any no other Halo game has been able to recreate the hype that was for Halo three in the marketing cycle and all the cool shit that was going on. Halo Infinite's getting close with just all the bullshit they're putting out. Just like constant like, oh hey, there's a drink with Master Chief on it. Oh hey, there's some <laughs> shoes with Master Chief on it. Oh hey, there's a room yeah, with Master true. Chief. Oh, there's some soap with Master Chief on it. I'm just like, stop please. 
I can't. Yeah, I My think, wallet can't think, handle this anymore. I think the hype train for Infinite has definitely risen uh, to like, um, like probably to where like Halo 5's hype train was as well. But it, it hopefully doesn't with a better payoff. Well, with a better payoff for sure. It, but but still, that Halo 3 hype was just unreal. That was like supposed to be the end of the series in many ways, and they yeah. kind of marketed it as such. So it was like this super epic moment, like we're finally finishing the fight with, between like, everyone. The, yeah, with the with the cliffhanger of Halo Two, and it's like yeah, yeah. Yes, it's, we've been waiting for this for three years. So um, I don't know if I had like a, an honorable mention that I would I would get in. I'm always a fan of uh the uneven elephants sort of <laughs> uh from yeah the first strike you know that that entire assault like from all of the spartans point of views um i just think was just very very interesting to to read and and really kind of grasp their capabilities as like a unit just this unstoppable fire team so that's so like chief and kind of how he leads that is is a good one and i'd even say from just recently reading Halo Uprising and like looking at the graphic comic like I feel like that was illustrated very well for the Chiefs sort of like literally just like blowing stuff up like he's trying to be funny not funny he's trying to be sneaky and so he's like quiet and being sneaky and then when he's discovered he just like chucks a grenade shoots his guns and just blows everything up and then runs away and then tries to be sneaky again <laughs> <laughs> to try to assassinate truth uh, but i would say that that comic is illustrated very well to where it really kind of sells like the like the veracity of of chief and and what he's capable of doing with with you know his surroundings and just overall killing of covenant species so those would be those would be my two honorable mentions, I guess. Chief being chief, so. baby. It's good. We like Chief. We like when he does things. Uh, he doesn't always say a lot, but when he does say things, you're like, oh shit, he said something. Fuck. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh shit. Watch him come uh, to Halo Infinite and be like, hey gamers, it's me, Master Chief. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Chief got cringe. Yeah, it's the real thing that we're going to see because the change from five, from four to five was kind of like big and caught a lot of people off guard. So I'm really yeah. curious to see how they portray him now. I think they're going to go back to like kind of the Halo 3 concept chief, I, I think. That's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah, I think Halo 3 chief was a good chief. I like Halo get. Reach Chief, where he just took a nap the entire time. That was great. Sleepy Chief? <laughs> Sleepy Chief, Sleepy yeah. Chief. Uh, Sleepy Chief. Yeah, he I takes kinda, a lot of naps, that guy. I, I think I agree with that Halo 3 comparison, because even in the marketing and kind of pre stuff that we've seen, Chief's, like, he's taking on a much more, like, forward assaulting sort of, like, directive. Like, whenever he's talking with the pilot, and it's like we we need to do this and like he's acting kind of in what he thinks is best whereas like a lot of like halo 2 and even like ce ce was just kind of like what do i do and like what's going on and he's just kind of like figuring out on the on the go and like same thing with halo 2 with like the covenant crumbling around him he's more or less just kind of there reacting the, the, yeah he's kind of reacting and like assessing and like getting the job done but like in halo 3 like he knows what we need to do and like he he's gonna go do it and even like to halo 4 to a degree where it's like we need to stop the diet act like boom 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 um and i kind of get that vibe from the sort of infinite stuff that we've seen so far like we, there's a huge banish problem there's this other cortana problem and probably a third problem we don't know about and the uh, harbinger is a problem the harbinger <laughs> yeah the harbinger is a problem so it, i think we're going to get much more initiative from chief in this go around to where he's he's not just going to be the the silent passive protagonist that just fights his way out I hope that. I hope it is him like taking charge of all these forces that you're seeing. I think that'd be really cool. See Chief like step up and not just be like a lone wolf, but actually see him organize a resistance. I think that that'd be really cool. Um, yeah. I mean I that's that that's cool. my hope, is that like yeah. by the end of the campaign, you know, since this since we have this mindset in the back of our head of like the next ten years, 
like I would think that wherever Infidence main story sort of ends, it's like now there's a whole army behind Chief that are now like mounting this huge resistance for what you know, however it is. But like we've made we, we've 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 just scrounged together our leftovers of the war that happened six months ago, and then now it's like everyone's standing behind Chief, ready to you know. Stick it to the banished. Yeah, yeah. Stick it. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, this is awesome premise there, really going forward. Um, so that's pretty much our character series. So, but all of these, most of the time, we ask the obvious question of, what, how will this feature into Halo Infinite? Said character. Uh, it's kind of obvious. Uh, we've already kind of talked about it. We know John is the center of this story. I mean, all three, three for three have learned their lesson from Halo Five and some of the stuff that they've said of focusing on Chief's story and obviously the spiritual reboot comments that had people kind of worried and myself included of what does that mean? I think we kind of know now um, where they're where they're kind of coming from, what they're going. And obviously, it's Halo Three vibes, Halo CE vibes, I think as well a little bit. It's just such, it looks so interesting, and uh, the campaign trailer we saw recently was pretty kind of cool telling us some things but not a lot of things i don't know it's really intriguing it's really exciting we're very close very very close to getting yeah. this game and it's it's been a long journey to finally play this game fuck yeah could, could you imagine if the game had launched when it originally supposed to have been like we would have been out for like a year at this point oh Bro, that's like, crazy i i saw that like there, there was a reddit thread that was talking about the comparisons between the the uh, campaign reveal in 2020 versus the campaign overview that we saw, you know, recently in 2021, and they were like, "Could you just imagine they launched it?" And it kind of kind of goes into a little bit of theory crafting of like, "This wouldn't have been ready. This would have been ready. We would have had to wait for a year for visuals to look like this. We'd be unlocking battle passes, and then we'd have." Mix. We would probably no content. Flush out content, and it, like it just kind of goed on, and it was like you know, it was it was you know maybe a little more hyperbole, but like it, there there is a world, you know, like uh, there there's a timeline out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> God, Halo Infinite, yeah, here. and and you know, so many things could have gone wrong, and just like for them to just continue to rebuild post launch would have just been terrible for the brand. And for three, four, three. So like I, I'm very happy with what I've seen and kind of where the state of the game is. And I'm confident that whatever issues are coming with launch, because there's always going to be bugs and stuff. Um, you know, we're actually with some features they've already announced. They're not going to be available at launch. That like we'll get there, but we're starting at a much better place than we did last year. For sure. Yeah, so, for sure. Hundred percent. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm just gonna close this out. Unless you guys have anything else to say. Uh, no. I think I think we've done a good job. No good stuff. Yeah. Man. I think uh, I think's about it. It's a big character, but we know so much about him that I don't think we need to spend four hours talking about his whole service record. Not really. And the most so. interesting parts are if what is what's coming next. Do you know what I mean? Like he's done a lot of cool stuff, and he's grown, and he's not grown, and he, you know. The games can be weird in terms of John's character, so it's just going to be really fascinating to see what they do, especially because like the most current books have done like a job of kind of going back to his past a little bit and kind of like fleshing him out back then, which is weird. But like here we are getting John in a unique situation that is similar to something he should be used to, but like it's so interesting what they have. With setting up with the weapon and all that kind of stuff i think that's all going to be very very interesting and i hope i hope they pull it together i really really do. i agree uh um, hell away, yeah. guys we're uh, a month away uh, god damn hot diggity uh so thank you all for joining us thanks aaron for doing the script and like we mentioned at the top of the show you can find every episode on our website halopodcastofall.com uh, search for us we're in your feeds we should be there uh, you should find us uh, if you want to listen to everything all in one feed there is a Halo Podcast of All feed there is also each show is kind of individually so we have a separate one for like uh, Mission Debrief and Build Blocks and whatnot. so you can get all those as well uh, once again shout out to our patrons guys thank you so much um, if you want to learn more go patreon.com 
slash Halo Podcast Evolved. And finally, if you want to leave us a voicemail, we have the ability and the technology. So give us a call at 205 Evolve. That's 205 386 5833. And with that, I've been your host, David. And until next time, Evolved. 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 Evolved.